Imagine you're running a highly profitable burger joint. Those tasty delights are flying out faster than you can say, extra onion, please. Until one day you realize that half your income is now spent on ketchup alone. Okay, that might sound a little bit extreme, but believe it or not, a similar issue is seen in companies all around the world. It's just that instead of burger joints, we're talking about cloud services, and instead of ketchup, we're talking about costs that can run wild if not properly managed. So FinOps, short for financial operations, is all about bringing financial accountability to the variable spend model of cloud. In simpler terms, because the cloud uses a pay-as-you-go model, Organizations might want to leverage FinOps guidelines to help them keep their cloud costs in check. Now, just like that ketchup got out of hand for our burger joints, cloud costs can spiral out of control quickly for enterprises if not managed effectively. Now, I hope that was a good introduction because we're ready to dive a bit deeper now. FinOps, just like DevOps, is an operating model. It combines systems, best practices and culture in the pursuit of helping your business manage the cloud spending and make the operations more efficient and cost effective. Let me give you an example. You probably heard of Netflix at this point, right? Well, they created a system for their engineers to turn off and use services, significantly cutting their cloud expenditure and saving millions of dollars annually by utilizing a simple FinOps principle. By the way, I found out they have many FinOps open positions as I was doing research for this video, and I'll leave a couple of links for you to check in the description below. Now, if all of that sounds good, it's time to go a little bit more deeper again and explore some of the principles that constitute what we call FinOps. But if you're still watching at this point and you appreciate this type of content, kindly hit that like button. It goes a long way in helping the channel, allowing me to keep making these videos for you. So if you are a cloud engineer or a solutions architect, odds are you have already been using a couple of FinOps principles intuitively as you work towards building a cost-aware solution. FinOps principle number one is all about unit economics, and this refers to the cloud spending related to a specific unit of business value. Remember, when we're doing solutions architecture, we can't afford doing things just for the sake of doing it. Everything we do needs to be related to some kind of business decision, business outcome, business value. For example, how much does it cost your organization to sign up a new user? Let's say you are handling the sign-up operation in a Lambda function. Well, that requires one invocation. Then you store the user's data in a DynamoDB. So now you have to take into account the cost of one DynamoDB write unit. Well, maybe you do also a search beforehand to make sure the email address is not duplicated. So whether that search is done on DynamoDB directly, please don't use scan, or you're doing that search on a cache instance, you have to add that cost to your model. But even before the Lambda function invocation happens, the request has been forwarded to it by an API gateway, probably. So we have to add that as well. Also, probably you want to send an email or two to confirm the email address, and we're gonna use SNS for that. And uh, SNS is simple notification service, right? So we have to create a topic for that. That has its cost as well. And if you're asking the user to upload the profile picture, odds are you're storing it in H3. So there's data transfer cost, there's storage cost. Now, this is but a simple example. But after adding up the costs of all these operations, you'll have an idea of how much the whole sign-up process costs you for one user. And this helps your organization take data-driven decisions and open the door for better discussions about scale. Let's say it costs you five cents to sign up one user. Obviously, I don't know your architecture, so just a dummy number. Now, your organization is able to make a data-driven decision for the upcoming quarter. I only have this much money left in the bank. Do I focus on bringing in new users or is it better to deliver new features for the existing ones because the return on investments of onboarding new users is just not worth it? You can really make the right decision before calculating the cost of one onboard. And of course, this is one unit economic, one variable. In real life, you'll have to use 
obviously many of them, like the cost of delivering content or the cost of processing one order and, and others just to make an informed decision. I personally was very surprised, to say the least, during my early days at AWS to see how religious Amazon is at using unit economics as a way to keep track of the cost they spend on cloud storage per user. But you know what? It helps us tremendously manage the costs and resource allocations more effectively. And if you are wondering how to precisely come to the right number, you can use the AWS calculator to estimate, create, and maintain these cost reports. All right, let's do another FinOps principle, the principle of informed decentralization, which is all about pushing accountability to teams. Now with this approach, you have as an organization to provide engineers and developers the visibility, the autonomy to make decisions about, about infrastructure resources, which means that developers need to have access to monitoring, a monitoring infrastructure or a monitoring solution that allows them to track their solutions as they get developed and used. And I found out that this doesn't only help in providing insights to developers about how their solutions are performing on production environments, but it also builds that sense of accountability. Since now your engineers and your developers can, after developing a solution or a fix, can see directly its impact on budget and can see their impact on, can directly see their impact on can directly see their impact on users by getting feedback, but also on budgets. And here's also a tip for you. If you build a solution and deploy it, and that solution turned out to be cost optimized and helps save the company something like $40,000, $50,000 a year, well, you can easily go to your manager and ask for a promotion and ask for a bump for an increase in your salary. And no manager can say no to that because you worked on something, that something made the company save $50,000. What is $10,000 for you? They would be crazy not to give it to you. I explore many cost optimization techniques and real FinOps case studies with my SA Magic students. So I'll leave also the link to the next edition down below so you can join us when I open doors next February, 2024. But Spotify is a very famous for their squad framework where each development team is accountable for their own budgets, their own spendings, and their own resource allocation, which means that every team operates as an independent tribe. And you can easily Google the Spotify squad framework to learn a little bit more about it. Now, doing business this way fosters responsibility and keeps everyone on the same page about the costs. Okay, so while these are just two of many principles guide in FinOps, they highlight the core ideas. Control costs, allocate resources efficiently, and continually strive to do better. By the way, I'm currently going through this Cloud FinOps book by O'Reilly. If you're interested in learning more about the topic, then consider hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and turning on the notification bell, because I will be making more videos about the world of FinOps, and you don't want to miss that. As always, thank you for tuning in, and see you in the next one. Peace out.